Hello and welcome to the news on Bahrain International. I'm Heba Abdel Ghaffar. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Order Number no. 9 of 2020, appointing an advisor to His Majesty the King. Article 1 of the Royal Order stipulates the appointment of Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa as an advisor to His Majesty the King for diplomatic affairs. Under Article 2, the Royal Court Minister shall execute the Royal Order from the date of its issuance. The Royal Order shall will also be published in the official gazette. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has issued Royal Decree No. 4 of 2020, appointing a minister. Article 1 of the Royal Decree stipulates the appointment of Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani as Foreign Minister. Under Article 2, the Prime Minister shall execute the Royal Decree, which takes effect from the date of its issuance. The Royal Decree shall also be published in the official gazette. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace the Foreign Minister Dr. Abdul Latif Al Zayani who took the legal oath in front of His Majesty the King following the royal decree issued by His Majesty on his new appointment. His Majesty congratulated Dr. Al Zayani wishing him success in assuming this responsibility and in serving the kingdom and its people, praising his experience experience and qualification. His Majesty also wished His Majesty's advisor for diplomatic affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, success in his new position, praising the diplomatic achievements of the kingdom on both the regional and international levels. Dr. Al Zayani expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his royal trust and affirmed His Majesty's directives that will motivate him to exert more efforts in assuming his national responsibility. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa awarded eight government service centers that have received gold classification under the second edition of the Taqim Service Evaluation Program at Rifa'a Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the Kingdom's continued commitment to enhancing the performance of public services in line with Bahrain's comprehensive development led by His Majesty the King. He emphasized the importance of innovation within government works streams to ensure optimal performance and service delivery excellence in the interest of citizens. His Royal Highness then awarded the following government service centers, the Information and E-Government Authority Center for ID card services located in Muharraq. The Northern Municipal Service Center, located in Hamad Town, affiliated with the Ministry of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning. Mm -hmm. The Bahrain Investors Center, affiliated with the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism. The Precious Metals and Gemstone Testing Directorate, affiliated with the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism. The Customer Service Center, located in Mazaya Plaza, affiliated with the Electricity and Water Authority. The Main Reception Center, affiliated with the Social and Insurance Organization. The reception center located in Sif Mal Muharraq, affiliated with the Social Insurance Organization. The customer service center located in Sif Mal, affiliated with the Labor Fund Tamkin. His Royal Highness commended the Government Service Center's Evaluation Committee's efforts for their thorough assessment of the services provided by the public centers, noting that the second edition of Taqim has set high standards and accelerated competition, supporting the government aim of delivering quality services for all. The senior government officials in attendance expressed gratitude for His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's continued support for enhanced public sector services, noting that positive service outcomes that benefit citizens and help to ensure the kingdom's overall development.
The first meeting of the third session of the Consultative Council of the National Initiative for Agricultural Development was held under the chairmanship of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness, Princess Sabika, valued the royal directives to develop and implement a strategic project for national food production by allocating sites for fish farming and plant production, raising the proportion of local production, developing na national capabilities in the field of food industries and maintaining the expertise of owners of workers with low incomes in those professions. Her Royal Highness noted the necessity of the sustainability of these projects and their development in the future, appreciating in this regard the role of the authorities in supporting these projects that contribute to achieving its goals, which is to unify efforts between the various authorities involved in the agricultural sector and overcome any difficulties facing workers in it and encourage the private sector to invest in the agricultural field. She stressed encouraging the use of the latest agricultural technologies and supporting scientific studies and following up on the implementation of educational programs to spread good agricultural practices. The Secretary General of the National Initiative for Agricultural Development, Sheikha Maram bint Isa Al Khalifa, briefed Her Royal Highness on the most important work of the initiative during the period 2016 to 2019, the most prominent of which was the focus on Hurat Ali project as an integrated agricultural project and the development of the permanent farmers market. Under the patronage of the National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander Major General Hassan Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, a graduation ceremony for one of the courses of new recruits was held in the presence of the Royal Guard Special Force Commander, Lieutenant Colonel Hassan Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. After the anthem and recitations of the Holy Quran, His Highness witnessed a military parade by the graduates and then listened to a brief about the course and its contents. His Highness Sheikh Nasser praised the high spirit of the graduates and also praised the constant support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He also expressed thanks and appreciation to the trainers and supervisors of the course for their efforts and professional level of the course. His Highness urged the graduates to exert further efforts and assume the noble responsibility of defending the kingdom and wished them all success. His Highness then distributed certificates and awards to the distinguished graduates who then performed the legal oath. The ceremony was attended by Deputy Commander of the Royal Guard, Major General Hamad Khalifa Al Nuaimi, Director of the Military Training, Major General Salah Rashid Al Saad, a number of senior officers and relatives of the graduates.
His Majesty the King's Representative for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Charity Organization, His Honor Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended the RCO's award ceremony for the best charity institution in the Arab world, as per the decision of the General Federation of Arab Achievers. His Highness praised the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Honorary President of the RCO, and His Majesty's keen interest on humanitarian work inside and outside of Bahrain. His Highness expressed appreciation for the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as the support of the Executive Administration and all of the affiliated staff of the RCO for their efforts inside Bahrain and beyond. His Highness affirmed that the success of the event reflects the keen interest of His Majesty the King in humanitarian work, especially for widows and divorced women in Bahrain through offering various services. His Highness said that it also reflects Bahrain's efforts for various countries that suffer from strife, war and natural disasters, and affirmed Bahrain's pioneering position and extended a helping hand to those in need through a variety of means, including development projects. For his part, the General Secretary of the RCO, Mustafa Al Sayed, expressed thanks and appreciation for His Majesty the King for his support and keen interest in carrying out humanitarian work through the RCO and in offering limitless support. He also thanked His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for their support. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the General Federation of Arab Achievers, Sam Lutfi, then gave a speech in which he expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his keen interest and support in the field of humanitarian work and thanked the Kingdom of Bahrain for its support for all of the world's people. At the conclusion of the ceremony, His Highness Sheikh Nasser opened a historical exhibition on the projects and achievements of the RCO, which contains photographic evidence of its efforts. First Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Athletics Association and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, participated yesterday in the activities of Bahrain Sports Day, which was held at the sports village behind the Bahrain National Stadium in Isa Town. The event was also attended by the Chairman of the Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation, Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Tawfiq Al Muayyad, President of of Customs, Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Secretary General of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Mohammed Hassan Al Nusuf, and a number of officials. His Honor Sheikh Khalid expressed satisfaction in participating in the Bahrain Sports Day, which is supported by His Majesty the King's Representative for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Honor Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in an effort to encourage everyone to practice sports. His Highness affirmed that Bahrain Sports Day represents an opportunity to break the daily routine with sports which decreases chances of being afflicted with chronic diseases and promotes healthy bodies, helping people to give more in the present and the future. His Honor Sheikh Khalid expressed happiness in the widespread participation in the activities of the National Sports Day, the institutions of civil society, citizens or residents. They also expressed appreciation for the efforts of the organizing committee. His Highness signaled the beginning of the race of colors, which was reserved for those with great determination, and toured the sports village to explore the rest of its activities. Thank you. 
at the Representatives Council, Speaker Fawzia bint Abdullah Zainal Lashour and Representative Council's General Secretariats organized a number of programs and activities on the occasion of Bahrain Sports Day. The Minister of Parliament Affairs, Ghanim bin Fadl al buinain and a number of members from the Shura and Representatives Councils, General Secretaries and former football player Hamoud Sultan, as well as employees from the two councils, General Secretariats. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, led by Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, expressed good wishes to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on the 19th anniversary of the National Action Charter and the 52nd anniversary of the BDF establishment. The Council affirmed that the National Action Charter is an important anniversary that celebrates patriotism under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Council also praised the role of the BDF in preserving the national gains and achievements as well as maintaining the security and stability of the country. It also praised the stance of the Arab League towards the Palestinian cause which affirms the importance of this cause for the Arab and Islamic nations. The Council then discussed a memoranda regarding the positive outcomes of participation of the the SCIA chairman in the Azhar al-Sharif International Conference. The president of the Sustainable Energy Authority, Abdul Hussein Mirza, laid the foundation stone of the solar tech factory for the manufacture of solar panels in the head industrial area in an event that was attended by the Assistant Under Secretary of Industrial Development at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Abdul Karim Ahmed Al Rashid, along with various senior officials. During the event, Mirza gave a speech in which he said that the establishment of the factory represents a watershed moment for Bahrain, through which the field of sustainable energy would be greatly enhanced in an effort to meet the domestic demand for energy. He said that Bahrain's leadership is keen on promoting the use of clean green energy and on the diversification of energy sources as part of the overall efforts to implement the Economic Vision 2030. Mirza added that His Majesty the King's Royal Decree from last October to establish the Sustainable Energy Authority represents the interest to further develop this field. Mirza discussed Bahrain's achievements over the past few years, the government's objective of turning 5% of domestic consumption into energy into clean energy by 2025 and how this field will further develop Bahrain. In celebration of Bahrain Sports Day, under the patronage of the Electricity and Water Affairs Minister Wa'il Nasser Al Mubarak, the Electricity and Water Affairs Authority organized many sports and health events in the presence and participation of the CEO of Electricity and Water Affairs Authority, Sheikh Nawaf bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, with a wide participation of the authority's officials and affiliates. Sheikh Nawaf stated that the Sports Day event comes in light of the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to allocate half a workday in all government ministries and institutions to allow employees to participate in the National Sports Day events in order to activate the role of sports as a way of life. He hailed the directives which contribute to enhancing the importance of sports for employees and its role in the lives of individuals and community, asserting that such initiatives are able to spread awareness on sports and promote it as a way of life life for employees. The Information and E-Government Authority unveiled major achievements in implementing its 2019 E-Government Strategy. IGA Chief Executive Mohammed Ali al Khaid said that IGA initiated more than 400 active e-services since the launch of the E-Government program, adding that these achievements reflect IGA's commitment to the directives of the Kingdom's senior leadership aimed at achieving the objectives of Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. Al-Qaid said 
that IDEA continuously works with public and private sectors to further improve its e services and will form a new strategy in 2020 aimed at further enhancing its digital transformation efforts and application of artificial intelligence technologies. al Qaed said that IDEA is committed to serving the public regularly, measures customer satisfaction levels across all e-services via its official social media accounts and surveys. al Qaeda announced that IDEA, in partnership with relevant entities, is close to launching the Sahati app, which will provide a unified platform for health services and will be of great importance to citizens, residents and visitors. IDEA Deputy Chief Executive eTransformation Dr. Zakaria Ahmed al Khaja said that IDEA implemented a number of innovations. We're glad today to announce the 2019 achievement for the Information E-Government Authority. We know since launch in 2007, E-Government program has aimed to provide high quality services for our clients and to streamline the interaction between government entity on one side and on the other side, the government clients. So this is our journey in the past years, which ended up to uh, provide provides 400 electronic services through different communication channels. Those services have saved a citizen expat and all government clients time and efforts by 74%, as well as to reduce the cost of presenting government services by 88%, which indicates a great achievement for 2019. Uh, we have in total, in 2019, 1 million 600,000 uh, electronic transaction uh, across, across different government services. An implementation of the directives of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Honor Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa on making sports a way of life. The General Secretariat of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports participated in Bahrain Sports Day in the presence of the Council's Assistant Secretary General, Dr. Abdul Rahman Askar, and a number of General Secretariat's employees. Oscar congratulated the people of Bahrain on the occasion, noting that Bahrain Sports Day is the country's appreciation for sports and its effective role in the community. He added that the participation of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports is a form of support to spread the culture of sports. Bahrain Sports Day, the national event organized for the fourth time this year, aims to promote public health by involving all sectors of the Bahraini society in order to instill the culture of sports as a healthy lifestyle. More in this report. A variety of sport programs and activities were held in celebration of Bahrain Sports Day to motivate all segments of the society to perform positive practices and make it a daily life routine. Parts of the event happening here is just from our side, calisthenics, and we have on the other sides different types of sports. Um, this is to raise awareness on what each sport is actually is, and basically if anyone is interested, they can come and ask us and talk to us about anything they want to, flexibility, strength. The sport day is a very good idea to, to keep the people to remember about uh, what you have to do like uh, for the healthy thing, and we are here. Uh, to show the people or the kids about the sport, about the equestrian sport. To encourage more people to join any kind of sport and to know what kind of sport that they want to join into. Uh, so they have it all. And then everyone can decide, especially for those uh, te teenagers and kids. A color run, table tennis, horse riding, traditional inherited sports, rope pulling, sports for people with disabilities, basketball, Spartan, physical fitness, CrossFit, mixed martial arts and American football and much more activities were available at the event. Really great time, me and my friends throwing the colors on the participants and runners. And it's a very great idea to remind us of how sports is important in our daily life. It helps us to look at all the sports and it, helps, uh, it keeps us healthy and we enjoy sports so it's healthy and uh, fun.
The U.S. Embassy supported the event with an interactive booth with the public, including fun sport activities such as pitching baseball competitions, highlighting sports as another area for collaboration between the two friendly countries. Developed quite an active uh, sports diplomacy program, as we call it, at the U.S. Embassy, in which we have, uh, for instance, brought out to Bahrain recently two members of our male and female professional uh, uh, soccer teams, or football as it's called here in Bahrain, and most of the rest of the world except for the United States, who were engaged in uh, clinics and uh, training. And um, we're also done some work in the in basketball and now baseball today. And what we find is, you know, sports is really a unique area for bringing people together and building understanding. And um, we're very pleased that uh, in a country like Bahrain, where there's so much tension given to sporting activities, getting people together, getting people outside, that we can really flourish with these programs. So always, always pleased to have the opportunity to participate uh, and to engage more and more friends of ours here in Bahrain through sports. Moreover, sports shows were featured on stage to entertain the public and raise their awareness about the available sports and their benefits and importance for health and general well-being.